Coming to you from Dynatrace Perform in Las Vegas, it's Pure Performance. Hello everybody and welcome back to Dynatrace Perform 2019 in Las Vegas. This is Brian Wilson of Perf Bites and Ask Perf Bites. Along with Mark the, Tomlinson. the lovely and talented Mark Tomlinson and, and the Pulley. very well-dressed James Pulley hey. of Perf Bites. So this is pure, well, I'm going to try to get this right, get it right this time. Pure Perf Ormans, no, pure Perf Bite Performance Perform. That's why I don't even try. Project. All right, but we have a performance project. great Who's guest with guest us today. Here? It's a joint podcast. That's all um, you need to know. Yes, Hopefully, I'll get the right inflections on the last name. But I'm, Simon so, I'm so excited that you're here <laughs> to chat with us. Close. Like, Schroeder, actually. Schroeder. Okay. Now you were pretty close, honestly. Yeah. The, the Americanized version. That's all the one you have that to matters, practice, right? Okay. Practice your <laughs> Deutsch. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, you're the, uh, let's see. Uh, Senior Director of Product Management. Yes. Exactly. And, and the announcement today is session replay. So we're really psyched to have you dig a little deeper into this with us. Yes. Happy to do so. Yeah. Yeah, we... You know, when we are uh, doing all our full stack story and we have just seen that with all the AI we have, sometimes we had just this, it, it just stopped at the user experience. And yeah. we wanted to complement that with, with having this, this final picture, this final puzzle piece. And that's when we started digging into Session Replay. And today, uh, we finally are ready to, to, to release it into a public beta yeah. such that all our customers can use it. And we are really proud of that. Yeah, and some so congratulations arriving at this point. Yeah. We had pointed out that there was some session replay even last year. Uh, it, it wasn't the full capabilities that you guys have been working on now. Well, it was some, some speaking, of it, yeah. it was right. kind it was of ready. Yeah. But, you know, it was not it, it didn't have the qualities that we think it needs to have to be production ready. To right. go now, yeah. Uh, one of the aspects was really volume um, because it, it, think of a mobile user and you want to do session replay on it, he's on an edge connection. You yeah. cannot just, you know, upload tens of megabytes of data. Yeah. Uh, maybe even kill his data contract. It would not be resilient. So we did a lot around bringing volume down, bringing bandwidth down. Okay. But yeah. also because of these upcoming regulations in Europe, GDPR. Oh, that, oh that's right. Um, yeah. You know, we, we had to, or we wanted to also add a lot of more capabilities to make sure we can protect customers' privacy. So yeah. all these aspects we did, and, and now we're ready at a level where we can say it's ready to go into production, large-scale production. That sounds great. Yeah, and I saw with the customer, uh, the, the data protection, the nice feature that you talked about today in terms of like with the telephone number yep. where certain characters that are not related to the data will still be exposed so that you can see if it is because of a wrong formatting issue uh, or something like that as opposed to just blanking it all out. Um, and that little bit of finesse is really important because when you're dealing with having to mask that, having to deal with GDPR, you right. don't want to fully lose the ability to still understand what happened. So I, can, I definitely, you know, we've, yeah, I've been... I've been dying for session replay. I love it. You know, as I've been wanting to get my hands on it. I know a lot of our customers are, so I'm very excited to hear that we're finally yeah. get, uh, we're getting to the beta now in February. Um, you, yeah. So I was going to say, like, yeah. we have people listening on the podcast who maybe have no clue what we're talking about. Yeah. So maybe sure. just kick us off with like, what are the three things that explain session replay? Well, I think probably you just need one thing. Okay. Which is really watching over the shoulders of a user and making a movie of what he does because okay. that's literally what it is now. So it's really a pixel-perfect reproduction of everything that's going on on his screen. Right. Well, well, we don't have the audio track, so we don't hear the guy talking. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe not yet. Yeah. <laughs> but apart from or that... Si or Siri. You're not talking to Siri <laughs> no, no, or no. Cortana. So. And we don't see his face, but everything that's going on on the screen, including all the moves... You know, all the clicks it does, everything that changes the entire visual experience, yeah. we, that's what we have in a pixel-perfect 4K quality way. Right, right. And that's what Session Replay is. Now, is it leveraging HTML5 interfaces to do a lot of this, or uh, browser-wise? But it's also native apps, any kind of app. Well, it leverages HTML5. Yeah. We also are working on the native app support. Okay. But this is not yet out. Okay. Uh, reason being that on native apps, you don't have the same capabilities as the HTML, yeah. and mm -hmm. we are just not yet happy with what level of volume we have reached. So right. we want to shrink it 
down more without compromising quality. Yeah. And that's where we're not yet there. So we'll release the mobile part later. Yeah. And and they're just going into beta now with the uh, web version, with the HTML based version. That sounds cool. Uh, what about combining it? Because the thing that we've been thinking is combining session replay in other use cases, um, like combining it with RUM data, with RUM, and combining it with uh, the with the Smartscape, right? So you're actually kind of pulling all of these pieces together, and is that part of the vision for where we're going? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's not only part of the vision. I think it's the main um, the main element that that actually distinguishes Dynatrace session replay from all the other products in the market because. Right. It is, it is interwoven with RAM. It is part of RAM. So there's yeah, no. Yeah. It, it's not a separate part. It's just you know it is RAM. Yeah. And of course, I, I made a, a small demo this morning, um, with a, with let's say just a, a customer case. Customer calls in and he says, you know, I ordered this hoodie, but it, it came with the wrong color. And now yeah. you go into session replay. You look for the very action. You're able to find it right yeah, where, where yeah. he clicked on that. You see it in session replay that he actually did click the red hoodie, but now. That's not the only part. Interesting is now that from that point, you can actually drill in down to the last line of code. Yeah. Because this this very color selection was always slowish. Yep. So I just drilled in in Dynatrace and saw that they needed 55 database statement to build it. Don't ask me why <laughs> and yeah. how. Uh, not so, even someone wrote that someone code. Someone wrote that it code. It was not it Simon. Was, no, it's not me. <laughs> but but that's exactly what you get. And this this full stack insight, you know, this is something that no other product can provide. This yeah. is really... Uh, a unique selling proposition that we have with standard dress session replay. Yeah, when I saw this morning when you showed that, but you know, I knew we could always go from the sessions to the replay, but then when you clicked on the node and the replay, went back to the step in the waterfall, I mean, in the thing went to the waterfall, I was like, I think that was a little bit newer. I'm like, that bi directional is so yeah. important because again, you don't have to jump out and figure out where you were and get back. And it, se you know, it seems like such a small little piece, but that seamless really flow was just. Yeah, I, yeah. I love that. That was great. Uh, and I think it's important, too, to understand with uh, the, the example you showed was great, at least I think, when people think, well, I have an error. I maybe get a JavaScript error. I see a slow rendering time. But what you don't see is a lot of the usability stuff, mm -hmm. right? And so in the example that we saw this morning for people on the internets yeah. was that you know a user goes through, they get to the final step. It was like a, a cruise purchase. They get to the final step, looked at the price, and they're like, is that the price I picked? They go back. Yeah. Looked at their search, look at their price, and then when they go back forward again, they're presented with pick which deck you want, pick which cabin you want. When you get to the form, all the form fields are empty again. Yeah. So there's no error going on anywhere. It's an error in design. But it's a horrible user experience. Yes. But terrible user experience. And mm. that's what I think is like where you say we're stopping at, everyone else is stopping at rum. We're not looking at actually what the user is feeling, right? Yeah. So yeah. it changes that dynamic a lot. Yeah. Very cool. And, and you great. mentioned division now, and this is yeah. exactly division where we want to go yeah. because if we want to be truly full stack we cannot stop at performance errors and the availability in these kind of topics but right. we need to include the usability part yeah. mm -hmm. and that's also where we will invest heavily now in the next years and months that we are not just you know session replay is now first piece but the next thing will be to more easily being able to find the sessions that matter from a usability perspective right, right where right. where did people rage click or yeah. where were they just moving the cursor around because yeah. they could not they didn't know they were confused right yeah. and we can recognize these things and so then we will can, flag wow. the sessions right? and al and also awesome. i'm guessing there would be metadata from a session replay itself that's usable in the ai engine Absolutely. So you can start doing, you know, having having an automated or autonomous way to get to those. Hey, there's a lot of people with very similar behaviors, as thus, uh, which relates to. I mean, that's very interesting yeah. for like a human factor study and everything else. I mean, ultimately, it, we want to have the same functionality for usability analysis that we currently have for problem. We want to have root cause detection, yeah. and we want to have the remediation. Mm -hmm. So our vision is that, of course, it goes into the AI, yeah. because we will have all these attributes. We can also raise problems now, because suddenly there are more people confused, and more people are frustrated or rage clicking. So you know, right. your usability has changed, or we detect dead clicks, right? Yeah. And this, of course, should also raise a problem. So if, if you do a new deployment and suddenly you have 20 times as much people that are rage clicking, you are obviously a severe issue. And for me, you know, a code level problem or a usability problem, it's the same kind of problem. It just keeps yeah. people from doing what they want to do. Yeah, yeah. And so we should treat them the same way. Yeah. And and obviously this is this is where we want to go, not just show you have a problem, but 
where is it and what do you yeah. need to change mm -hmm. to make it disappear and, yeah. and this step I think this is this will be the next big thing to really give our our customers the ability to automatically know what they need to change to improve their applications yeah and yeah I, well I, was, I wanted to ask so we know that's going to be in the AI are there plan what we've been what we've been talking to with a lot of people uh, this this these last few days are creative uses of products right where we have a fantastic API in the Dyna, in Dynatrace, and people are starting to use it in a lot of creative ways. We're doing really cool integrations with Neotis, or they're coming to us and working with us. A lot of vendors are, you know, us and OpenShift working together. Is are there plans on this data being available via the API so that users can start using it like in ways we weren't even planning for? Yeah, definitely. So yeah. we already have it available through the uh, user session query language. Okay. So there you already can access the data. But so that's already in, in the API as well? Yeah, to, to the there. But awesome. we'll, we'll extend it because there are some elements still missing. Um, well, technical reasons I don't want to delve yeah. too deep into <laughs> it, but this is definitely, we'll add that. And also all these usability um, properties that I just mentioned, we'll add them as well, mm -hmm. such that whatever you want to do, you can actually access all, already all this rich information available yeah. to get in, into even new uh, use cases that, as you said, we don't even know what they could be. But of course, you know. Someone's going to think of something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll be surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they will run. Really I, I see a whole discipline developing uh, to provide reporting to marketing departments on usability just out of the RUM data and session replay. Yep. You know, completely independent of, all, of the back end statistics. I see I somebody know. being the VP of user psychology. Well, also you know, with the rage clicks you talk <laughs> yeah. about, like it's, but yeah. you know, <laughs> but accessibility. I mean, you think about uh, the people that do invest in accessibility and human factors. Mm -hmm. They're all like PhD level psychologists, and they're looking at human behaviors and ergonomics, mm -hmm. and that's a very costly thing to do. If you have a rare, somewhat rare app, maybe less rare now, where you you're almost ubiquitously invading the human experience with software and interaction and digital interaction to do every function. I loved the video this morning on the main stage, the the guy trying to get into his house after going to the dentist. Yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> but that's just it. Now, session replay for that guy would be like, uh, wow, this is, yeah. But that's, I mean, that's a real human experience. But we'll see that same thing digitally by leveraging uh, data and metadata analysis about a session. Yeah. That's I right. think that's, I'll that's always cool. have a hard back, a physical backup. A physical backup, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> a key, yeah, exactly. What else should we know about uh, yeah. session replay or anything else? Or Barcelona? <laughs> well, Barcelona's <laughs> a great city. <laughs> yeah. I just had to bring some, actually I got into trouble in the airport. Yeah, uh, I wanted to bring some Jamon Serrano from oh, Barcelona, yeah. you yeah. know, for I've heard about buddies. people bringing a whole egg. Yeah, and I actually declared it, which probably was a bad idea. Yeah. So I went through, like, free scanners. Um, yeah, yeah. No, apart from that, Barcelona's gorgeous as always. And did, did it make it through? Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it did make it through. It was just I, I don't see any in front it's of it. Gone. It's gone. It's gone. I'm really sorry. But it was good. It was good. It was really good. <laughs> No, and I guess, I mean, I already made the main points. The next thing, the next big thing also for me and the Barcelona team will be to dig into the usability analytics part cool. and add more intelligence to the bra on top of session replay. And we're really thrilled That's awesome. um, to get that done. Now, they n announced uh, near the end of February, it'll open to anyone who's interested. They can just yeah. send along information, exactly. contact their rep, or, or go through the community even, I think. Exactly. Um, and then an expectation for the beta would be, you know, you're starting with different customers and rolling through different sectors, different kinds of apps. What are you looking forward to there? Well, I mean, it, it's always just, I want to get it out now yeah. to get the real feedback, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Because it, it's a visual, and we, we'll just find out things we're not even dreaming of yet. Yeah, and so yeah. that's why I'm so eager to finally get it out on the market. And we will be rolling it out pretty broadly. Yeah. So from the beginning, we want to cover different industries to also get really good feedback. And Great. we will also put the process in place with Dan Grace One Premium, Business Insights, yeah. to, you know, to support these customers such that we can also help them with recommendations yeah. and really get a, an intense dialogue going. That sounds good. That sounds awesome. good. Congratulations. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Congrats. That's really great. Thanks uh, for joining the podcast. Now, well, we, we've never come to Barcelona well, perform that's, that's to do a pod. We should have. We don't should we need podcasting in Barcelona? Oh, absolutely. Would we have it's to speak totally Spanish? And one of our other hosts speaks Spanish, so he could come and yeah. 
speak they speak Spanish in Barcelona in Spain and Catalan right? Catalonian Catalonia. Well, Catalan yeah well you know Barcelona is pretty international so Spanish yeah. you'll, you'll be fine and even English it's it's okay all right I can, so I can you can definitely should go yeah. All right, gee, okay, <laughs> we, ju- we just put Wait, a plug in there, yeah. Brian. We're, <laughs> we're going to go to Barcelona. <laughs> All right, excellent. All right, thank you, Simon, so much. It's been a pleasure as always. Thanks and, for having uh, me. We'll, we'll hopefully have some uh, really great uh, – well, maybe we'll get to catch up in a few months uh, and find out in how Barcelona. things are going. Yeah. And definitely yeah. sign up, and then sign make up sure for the beta. Some decent oh, yeah. And, yeah, sign up for the, <laughs> the – uh, yeah, the, that stuff's delicious. Okay. Sign up for the beta and sign up for uh, Perform Barcelona, everybody. Yeah. I think it's uh, probably opening pretty soon, so go on. Anyway, thanks for coming. Muchas gracias. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>